It used to be sailors and women no better than they ought to be. Now it's salesmen and doctors' wives with butterflies on their bottoms. What starts with a stencil can end up a walking art gallery. The skin is the canvas, the needle, the brush. Tattooing, once the preserve of the back street parlour, has gone up market. And Dennis Cockle, with a pristine studio in London's Hampstead, is leading the new wave. Mind you, the techniques he uses are much the same as they've always been, just a bit more hygienic. The needles that we use now these days are three small needles set up in a round cluster. They run through a stainless steel tube and they just vibrate under the skin surface. There's about seven layers of skin but we only break about four. This leaves a trail of black pigment underneath the skin. We use a shading machine just to fill it in. This is seven needles set up a little bit like a paintbrush in a way. Um, virtually the same as the first machine I use, except these are in a flat row, more than a round cluster. Again, the tattoo starts from the bottom and follows through the design. Does tattooing hurt the subject? Uh, it's got a slight stinging sensation just to start with, maybe if it's their first time tattoo, but apart from that, nothing really to speak of. No one knows how many people in Britain have tattoos. Most keep them well hidden. But the designs they're choosing are getting more adventurous. But in body decoration, we're still a long way behind the primitive tribes of Africa and Asia. They painted their bodies to scare away demons, and that's still a theme of a lot of modern tattoos. There have been cases of people contracting serum hepatitis and other blood-transmitted diseases through tattooists' dirty needles. But tattooists, while they still have no formal training, are having to improve standards or risk losing customers. Are there any people you won't tattoo? Certainly, anybody under the age of 18. And I don't tattoo below the wrist or above the neckline. Why? I think it's a little bit obscene and maybe they might regret it in later years. If people come in here a bit uh, the worse for drink, decide at the spur of the moment to have a tattoo, will you do them? No, they refuse. You think they're going to wake up the next morning and regret it? They may well do, like a number of things you can do when you're drunk. But now there's a ray of hope for tattooed ladies and gentlemen who want to get rid of their dark secret. The Middlesex Hospital has been using lasers to remove tattoos as part of a research program. They've been flooded with requests for the operation. The laser burns the outer layers of skin and vaporizes the pigment underneath. The dye will be given off as water and the skin will eventually close up, leaving hardly a mark. A simple outline can be removed in one treatment, but a shaded tattoo needs a second or a third visit. There are already far more patients than the hospital can treat. Dr. Cochrane, this is very expensive equipment you're using here, and your time is very valuable. Should you really be using it on removing tattoos? Well, this was only started off as a small project to look at the uh, removal of tattoos from a research aspect, but um, I've been struck since we did start it by the very great depth of feeling that people have about their tattoos and how much it does interfere with their lives. We've had a number of teenagers who've even been trying to shave off the tattoos themselves with a knife. Um, I think it's something that uh, is, is really, uh, there's a great need for. What the hospital takes off, Dennis Cockle puts on, with just as much skill and attention to detail. He hopes it will become easier for people to get rid of their tattoos if they get tired of them. He knows there's plenty of fresh customers just aching to have a samurai warrior climb all over them.